talking about the motivation by which author John in 1 John chapter 5 is writing these words and getting so meticulous about who Jesus Christ is and who God the Father is because there's so many bad interpretations, heretical ideas of what John is writing. So let's go back to 1 John 2, 22 to 23. As we read, author John continues to assert that eternal life is solely through faith in God's testimony about his son Jesus. Why so adamant about that? Well, we're going to find out. Refuting those who denied that Jesus is the Christ, the Antichrist, who denied both the Father and the Son, insisting that eternal life was not available through faith in Jesus Christ at all, hence making God out to be a liar. And here's the, the testimony in 1 John chapter 2. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? That is, this is the Antichrist the one who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges, in the sense of believes in, the Son has the Father also. So the author John is reaffirming that he wrote in his gospel that since Jesus Christ alone is eternal life, then one who believes in him and him alone, his propitiatory sacrifice for the sins of all mankind, one has eternal life. In other words, one has spiritually incorporated Jesus Christ within oneself Remember John 3, 5 to 6, spiritually and forever. In no other way can eternal life be obtained. <clears throat> Every time you come up with a great uh, point of communicating the message of the gospel, there's always somebody out there and around the corner saying, well, wait a minute, there's a little bit more needs to be done, and don't listen to that guy anyway. Take a look at 11 of John, Gospel of John, John 11, 25 to 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life to Martha. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And do you believe this? We'll take a look at John 11, 25 to 26. You can find so much corroborative evidence, especially amongst John's works in his epistles and the gospel. Let me say John 11. Good morning. Morning. What's the gospel? The good news we're and not anything else somebody else says, right? We're winning. Well, we're losing as an evidence of the fact that we're winning. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now, every time I mention it, I get I get I get in a fist fight this morning. This morning? Yes. You were at it with somebody yesterday too. Yes. <laughs> it's just uh, you know, they they confront you and then they antagonize. Uh, that's and great. and you have to wade through and then you have to raise your voice a little bit. I'm not. This is not my angry voice. I'm just overcoming your voice at me. <laughs> and it never ends peacefully. But at least you got your message across. So yeah. Je Jesus. Yeah, the trick is they want you. They want to be able to say, "Oh, that guy's an asshole." Yes. So they try and antagonize you to get you to shout at him or call yeah, him a yeah. motherfucker or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh. Oh, I don't have to listen to anything. Well, else. this morning I'm coming out of my building, and a guy's got a huge tricycle. And it's going down a ramp that I need to get to. <laughs> and, and the ramp is only this wide. He says, you can get by. Give me this much to get this by. And he says, you want to fight? You want to fight? <laughs> and I get, all, I get all, I, I guess this guy must have been in the Navy, the Army, and the Air Force all combined. He's got every four-letter four word mastered. <laughs> and, and I said, look, just don't come at me. Uh, and I back up and back up. But I back up three times, and then I fight. And I pulled out my pepper spray. I said, look, you want some of this? Come and get it. <laughs> and then he backed up. And then he backed up way up. Now you want to fight? <laughs> it's like, what are we, in, in in high school or something? And I got reported for carrying pepper spray on my residence. <laughs> That's how the whole thing came out. I, I'm not allowed to carry pepper spray. You're not? No, of course you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, you know I, I'd say, well. Not me. Did you see it? Or no, I use it for cooking. You know, I don't whatever. <laughs> this is part of the Christian life, you know. You gotta take it with a grain of unsalt. Yes. <laughs> see you later. Enjoy your music. Thank you. Hey, what's your business anyway? Mine is monkey business, of course. Well my I'm I'm doing YouTubes on the gospel. Oh, oh literally I do amazing. that three a three a day. Oh. What's amazing is you corroborate to the salvation can only be by uh, faith alone. Oh, no, no, we got a place. Every place you go, Jesus says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will never even die. What else do you got to do? It just says believe. Right. 
and, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And Martha said, yes. She didn't say yes, but. She just said, yes, Lord. You are the son of God. Like that you're in. Amen. You're yeah. in. But wait a minute. Oh, wait. You have to hate homosexuals and you have to vote Republican. Ah, oh, really? Yeah, sorry. That's sort of the deal. There's always a butt there, isn't there? Yeah. You know what I do with butts? I figured out they're cigarette butts and don't want to light them again. That's right. <laughs> See you later. Okay. All right. We're going to take a look at John 11, 25 to 26. Who is Jesus speaking to? John 11, 25 to 26. All right, nice to meet a fellow believer. Confirm the Martha said to Jesus, I know that he will rise again, meaning her brother, because he died in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to him, to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Anything else? That's it. Jesus, the Son of God, is telling you what you need to do and that you'll never die. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And what did Martha say? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have believed that you are the Christ, the Son of God. What does that mean? We already went into that 1 John 5, 1. And everything that that entails, died for your sins, even he who comes into the world. And he, she affirmed the gospel of faith alone in Christ alone, and that he was it. Anyway, John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. And then in John 3, 14 to 18, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Talking about saving people from uh, uh, snake bites that wouldn't die. All they had to do was take a look at the serpent that he made on a bronze and put it on a pole and by his tent. Everybody looked at that that got bitten by a snake and didn't die of the poison. So Jesus makes a reference to that saying, The Son of Man must also be lifted up on a pole, on a cross, so that whoever believes in him will be in him will have eternal life. And then you have John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only unique Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And then, For God did, did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world. What did he come for? But that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. So, if you haven't believed, you stand condemned. You've done a lot of good stuff, but you haven't believed, you still stand condemned. But because he has not believed in the name of the one and only unique Son of God, this propitiation for the sins of the whole world. And that's all you have to do. John 3.36, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Isn't that amazing? How much affirmation do you want? And we can go into the other books of the Bible as well and uh, find hundreds of passages that confirm that, not one that denies it. If you read it carefully. So we're looking at 1 John 5, 13, closing out this great passage, and we'll move on in chapter 5. 1 John 5, 13, after absorbing 9 through 12 and all what that entails, which we just did, the crowning verse, these things, John wrote, I, write, I wrote to you that believe on the name of the Son of God. So he's affirming and addressing those who have believed on the name of the Son of God, that you what? May know now that you have eternal life. Oh, I have eternal life. I think I'll have it. No, you may know now based on what he just said in verses 9 through 13. You have eternal life unto believing on the name of the Son of God. So if you believed on the name of the Son of God, then you know now that you have eternal life. Thereafter, you have assurance no matter what. I take a look at the interlinear. That's such an important verse. These things I wrote to you, plural, past tense, aorist tense, to those believing, to those who are believing in the name, to the, to the believing ones. So in a moment of believing, you become to those believing ones. In the name of the Son of God, that you may know that life you have eternal. Unto believing in the name of the Son of God. Note that although some manuscripts omit this fourth phrase, the majority of and the earliest manuscripts have it with either unto believing or and that you may believe. So the last phrase of the verse rendered unto believing on the name of the Son of God, which is in a majority of the 600 plus 
600 plus manuscript testimony of this verse is a message for believers who have already believed on the name of the Son of God as a result of their assurance of having eternal life are exhorted to continue in that faith because they have complete assurance. I continue in the faith. Don't doubt that I don't have salvation as long as I stick my nose in that Bible and keep reading because it affirms itself over and over and over again just as we've just discovered. It's an amazing thing, but you have to keep your nose in the book to keep your understanding of assurance because there's so much stuff out there that you have to defend against. And that's why we belabor this particular passage. So a review of 1 John 5, 1 to 12. I would do that on your own because we've beaten this to death. This affirms what it says. It's such a great passage. We move on past 13. Well, let's review 13 there. And the verse goes on to say that during those times when children of God, born of God, determined to recall that they have believed in the name of the Son of God and Him alone for eternal life, they can know that moment. They can lose that moment too, but that doesn't mean they don't have it. They can know that they have eternal life. And this assurance by God is given to encourage His children, born of, God, of Him, to continue to believe in the name of the God's Son so that they may then be better enabled to choose the means available to them to have fellowship with God, confession, and with one another according to Scripture, studying the Scriptures and, and uh, sacrificial love towards the brethren, obedience to Scripture, to the commands, and the, and the agape love toward God, your Father. The source of the child of God, born of God's knowing that he has eternal life is God himself, as testified to in Scripture, especially in 1 John 5, 13. This knowing, this assurance of one's salvation, which comes from God, is prompted within the child of God, born of God, while he is recalling in his mind that he has believed in the Son of God for eternal life. And as children of God, born of God, continue to believe in the name of the Son of God and him alone for eternal life, they may then be better enabled <clears throat> to choose the means available to them to have fellowship with God. Obedience and confession, acknowledgement that you are not perfect and you walk in the light, not try to walk according to the light. Let God assure you of that by confession and with one another according to Scripture, the subject of John's epistle. Without the assurance of eternal life, there is no fellowship for children of God, born of God, with God, or one with another. If you don't recognize that you have assurance in Christ alone, you're doing something on your own, and that's unscriptural. It, it contradicts the grace of God. It's either works or grace, not both together. But without assurance of one's salvation, which rests upon God alone, through the grace of God alone, through the name of His Son alone, one looks in all the wrong places for that assurance, instead of trusting in God for it, and out of fellowship position. Hence, being in fellowship with God is a very all-important thing of this theme of uh, the first epistle of John, Hence, being in fellowship with God is an all-important factor in the lives of the children of God, born of God, as taught throughout this epistle. And it is the stated purpose of this epistle, John 1, 1 to 4. Very important. John 1, 1 John 1, 1 to 4. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we, when, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Who's that? That's Christ, Jesus Christ. And the life was manifested to the apostles. And we have, we apostles have seen and testified and proclaimed to you from their personal experience back in the first century to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us, Jesus Christ. We're talking about the person of Jesus Christ. And what we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also that you too may have fellowship with him, with us. This letter is a proclamation of what was being said right here. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write to you so that our joy may be complete. The purpose is to get people who are born again children of God, to get them to be born again children of God, and then continue on in a pattern of having fellowship with God with the things of agape love and the things you learn from Scripture and confession of sins. All right. On the other hand, the words rendered, these things I wrote to you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. In 1 John 5, 13, which words are addressed to children of God, born of God, portray an assurance within them of having eternal life based on their knowing that they have believed on the name of the Son of God. Which assurance? 
is uniquely and absolutely trustworthy because it's based